after all, according to biblical tradition, he's the one who prophesies the salvation of Jerusalem, right? You don't get a figure more famous and prominent than that. So the fact that there are people a century later still being called Isaiah doesn't mean a thing to me. Um, I st you show me a bunch of these seals from the late 8th century with the site excavated in the late 8th century with the name of Isaiah, then I'd be convinced. But I would say that the fact that you have this name that becomes prominent in later literature, so much so that there can be a, a child born in Bethlehem, you know, by the name of Jesus, what? A, a derivative of Isaiah, of course, is because of Isaiah and who he was, not because there were tons of Isaiahs running around uh, 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 Jerusalem in, in this particular time period. So I think when you put all that context together, um, we learn something really significant about the history of the, the, the title prophet and um, the bureaucracy of Jerusalem and something about the relationship between Hezekiah uh, and uh, Isaiah at this time. So I think that you know, this new seal impression from from uh, Jerusalem is actually really, really interesting. And it's more interesting than the popular press, which says, have we proved that Isaiah existed, right? Yeah. We all knew he existed. That, we, we didn't need any proof. But we learned an awful lot about the history of the institution of prophecy, the relation, uh, the, the development of bureaucracy, Judean bureaucracy. We also learned something about the history of Hebrew language, 